So today we're going to talk about hair and makeup in the 1960s. So the 1960s brought about a lot of change in all aspects of people's lives. Um, as the 60s progressed, style ideals shifted as cultural attitudes towards personal and sexual freedom began to change. So in the beginning of the decade, you're going to see people that were still kind of clinging to their more conservative ideals. Um, but as the period went on um, and we started to get all of these outside influences, for instance, the Beatles arrived in America in 1960. Um, this sort of like British invasion really started to influence the way that we behaved, um, especially like the younger generations. Um, as the like hippie and flower child movement started, um, people started to really explore um, what it meant to be free in sort of like all aspects of the word. So you really start to see that um, become reflected in the personal styles of people as the decade continued. Um, some important style icons from this period, um, the Beatles, obviously, um, as I had just mentioned Twiggy. Um, she was really popular during this time. Andy Warhol, Janis Joplin, um, Jackie Kennedy, Sophia Loren, John Lennon, Diana Ross, Edie Sedgwick. There's just a ton of people, right? Like from this point on, we're going to start to see so many people, um, especially I feel like in the music industry that are really starting to sort of influence the way that um, people looked in their everyday lives. Um, so as far as makeup went in the 1960s, things were still kept fairly natural, um, especially compared to when we get to um, some of the later time periods that we're going to be studying. Um, but definitely the big takeaway from makeup in the 60s was definitely eye makeup. Um, eyes were sort of the focal point throughout the entire decade. Um, lip colors were usually kept pretty natural and pale. Um, there was even a point where Paris uh, was kind of influencing our style, as it still kind of does today. Um, and white lipstick was actually in for a little while. Um, was everyone wearing that? No, but um, that's just one of the small trends that we did see come out of the 1960s, right? Um, but in general, people kind of just kept like a more natural nude lip. Um, and then they kind of really focused on their eyes. So whether that was like a heavy eyeliner look um, or it goes into like the more like mod 1960s look that a lot of us are used to seeing, um, there was usually some kind of focus on the eyes. Um, so Audrey Hepburn's look in um, Breakfast at Tiffany's became sort of like an iconic look of the 1960s as far as style was concerned. Um, she had a little bit less color on her face, her lips were more natural, but her eyeshadow was pretty heavy as was her eyeliner. So um, once everybody started to see that, they kind of started to follow her even more in trends. Um, she was already pretty in trend from the 1950s, but um, it was her appearance in Breakfast at Tiffany's where a lot of people um, really started to like idolize her style. Um, bold eyebrows and heavy black eyeliner, um, they were pretty much trendy um, in the early 60s. That's something that we kind of saw um, start in the 50s that did kind of carry on as well. Um, in the mid-1960s, eyebrows started to be a little bit less bold and the focus really was on just the eye makeup itself. Um, people were wearing false eyelashes. Um, People were not necessarily wearing a ton of blush, but um, they did kind of like shade and contour um, under their cheekbones just to give them a little bit of definition, but it wasn't necessarily like a super like blush heavy period. Um, a lot of times um, for the eyeshadow colors, people would actually use like white or other really like pale, even like metallic shades at some points. Um, I think one of the most iconic makeup looks that we do see in the 60s is from um, supermodel Twiggy. Um, so I think we've probably all seen these pictures of Twiggy where she has like the huge like doll eyed look um, where she's got like her top and bottom lashes are very very defined um, and she's got like these nude glossy lips and everything is just really focused on like her like giant eyes right. Um, that is probably one of the most iconic looks that you're going to like think of when you think of 1960s makeup. Um, and as far as like Twiggy and her makeup was concerned that falls a little bit more into like the mod look um, of the 1960s. So not necessarily everyone was going to be looking like that, not like your average housewife was going to do that, but as far um, as like huge trends go, that's definitely one um, that you are going to really see whenever anybody is talking about the 1960s. Um, Usually, um, as far as like the eye makeup went in the 1960s, the iconic eyeshadow looks of this period included heavy shading um, in the eye sockets and either like a very pale color on the lids or not even necessarily like really any color at all. 
Um, so you're going to have some time periods where they just have one color um, from like the top of their lid all the way up to the eyebrow. But in the 1960s, they put a lot of focus on really like shading in the crease. Um, and that is also something that you really see uh, within Twiggy's looks. Um, so if you're kind of unsure of what that is, if you look up Twiggy, uh, you will definitely understand a little bit more about like this sort of like classic 1960s makeup. Um, and so really like the big takeaway um, as far as like makeup and just kind of style in general is concerned with the 1960s is that um, the 1960s was a decade of rebellion um, in which the younger generation sort of took on like a completely different appearance um, than what the rest of the world was like used to seeing, right? So we had kind of grown up, um, if you were in this time period, right, with like a very um, kind of conservative way of looking. And then in the 60s, it was just sort of like amplifying everything and changing things um, as we all kind of like changed how we saw the world. So you can really see like a direct, I feel like, reflection of um, things that were going on within like culture and society um, in the way that people were sort of like presenting themselves to the world. Um, so as far as women's hair was concerned in the 1960s, um, you go through like a few different phases with it. Um, so in the early 1960s, um, First Lady Jackie Kennedy was sort of like the style icon. Um, and her hairstyle was sort of the, like, epitome of, like, what the traditional, like, conservative housewife look would be. Um, so she had sort of this, like, teased, like, bubble kind of hairstyle. So it would have a lot of volume up at the top, um, and then it would have little flips out at the end, usually. Um, and so this was sort of, like, the beginning of us seeing, like, these really, um, extremely voluminous hairstyles. Um, not quite a beehive yet at this point, but women were really starting to work on getting um, almost like a helmet head like level of volume, right? Um, so we weren't quite at like the hairspray, like the musical level yet, but it's, it's starting to get there. Um, and as the 60s progressed, not everybody was kind of like following that ideal. You did have some people um, that were sort of rebelling away from like the really like put together, like shellacked down kind of a look. Um, people like Bridget Bardot and like Sophia Loren, um, as they were kind of like exploring their personal and sexual freedom, you can kind of see that reflected, um, in the way they chose to style themselves, right? So their hair was like a little bit more tousled, like yes, like maybe they did have some of the volume going on, but it wasn't all like stick straight and put together. Some of it was down and they had long curls, um, and it was just sort of like a take on what the traditional kind of like housewife style was, um, but kind of going in like a completely different direction, right? Um, because you started to see all these hairstyles that were coming into trend that were so voluminous and just involved so much hair, um, a lot of people were actually wearing, like, fake hair pieces and people were wearing, um, wigs. That became trendy again. It wasn't necessarily something that, um, kind of brought any shame, which I do think for a while people didn't really want to talk about the fact that they were wearing wigs. Um, but in the 60s with some of these hairstyles, there's no way that, um, people would have been able to get the volume that they were getting if they weren't wearing some kind of like a wig or a hairpiece. Um, so some people that you can look to for examples of that, um, Diana Ross and the Supremes, the Ronettes, um, Patti LaBelle, all of these people were very famous for wearing, um, these really intense like, kind of like beehive looks or just like the classic like very voluminous 1960s look but it was definitely um, achieved with wigs um, which you still see a lot today right like um, if you do work on any kind of a show um, with like 1960s looks and they do want that kind of like a beehive super um, voluminous bouffant kind of a look you really do have to have like multiple wigs or at least like a wig and a hairpiece otherwise you're not going to be able to achieve um, that kind of volume on like one wig alone um, and then, again, you can kind of start to see some of the, like, British Invasion sort of style takeover. Um, as that kind of, like, um, worked its way through America, that's when I, you kind of started to see, I feel like, a little bit more of, like, um, like the mod styles come through. So you started to see women um, that were actually, like, ironing their hair straight to try to get that really, like, straight texture. Um, and again, like, we don't you know, we didn't have hair straighteners back then, so people were physically, like, ironing their hair. Um, so I think that's something to think about and to be very thankful for now, uh, that we are not still doing things like that. Um, and it was in, within this time that, um, the five-point cut kind of became really famous, and that sort of started, um, 
even more of like the mod trend coming into fashion here. Um, if you're looking for an example of that haircut, that would be kind of how Twiggy's hair was cut, right? So it's like these very short um, haircuts that became sort of like the staple of the iconic uh, mod style of the 1960s. So that was created by um, Videl Sassoon, um, who obviously that's still someone uh, whose company and whose brand has a large kind of like um, holds over like the beauty industry and hair industry so it's still someone that is very relevant um in our industry right now um as time kind of progressed in the 60s we went even um kind of more rebellious right so instead of having these really like shellacked intense styles once we got to the late 60s like think like once we're getting to like woodstock and everything um the hippie and flower child movement sort of started um and that was really like this like, intense exploration of um, personal and sexual freedom and in that people kind of like ditched like the styling products they didn't want to you know have these really complicated hairstyles anymore they just wanted to be free right so you're going to see a lot of people with um, long loose hair natural texture um, was finally something that was really like coming into style and being more ex um, accepted so that meant that um, a lot of african-american women instead of trying to force their hair um, to be in these styles that uh, kind of fought against what their natural texture was. A lot of them were actually like growing their hair out into afros. Um, so you're gonna see that in this period. Um, you're gonna see people that are braiding their hair, they're gonna put flowers in their hair, all sorts of little like adornments and things. Um, I really recommend if you're looking for uh, good examples of hairstyles um, kind of from like the hippie flower um, child movement to definitely look up pictures from Woodstock because um, you will see some really wild stuff in there. Um, and so our men in the 1960s, as far as like their hair and facial hair was concerned, um, so they still wore their hair very conservatively, um, in the beginning of the 60s and really like all throughout history, you're still going to find a lot of men, um, who are always going to have sort of not necessarily like the same haircuts, but you're going to have a lot of like these very short conservative styles, um, just because a lot of times like their workplaces weren't the biggest fan um, of them having longer hair. So in the beginning in the 60s, you are really going to see people um, with these like shorter, more conservative haircuts. Um, military was still influencing hair, so there were still people walking around with like crew cuts and flat top hairstyles. Um, however, once the Beatles uh, arrived in America in like the mid 60s, the sort of like mop top hairstyles that they had became very, very popular with men. Um, so a lot of people started to kind of like embrace that look. Um, and as they started to let their hair grow out into these sort of like kind of like mid-length styles, um, you started to see some people that just like pushed it further and further, right? So like as like the hippie um, flower child movement started, you start to see men who are growing their hair out um, almost as long as some women. Um, a lot of times I feel like men's hair in this period um, was kept maybe more like shoulder length, but especially once you do get to Woodstock, you're going to see people that have hair that's just as long um, as women's hair. So that is something that's really cool to see because it's been um, a long time in history, really, if you're looking um, through all the decades that we've been studying and everything where men have had hair that's um, equally as long as women. So we're kind of finally going back to that um, after all this time. Um, and as far as uh, facial hair was concerned, so um, men had a lot of like really intense like sideburns, I feel like, um, in this time period. Um, and some men even had um, like really full beards. You're going to see mustaches. Um, a lot of men had like the exact same hairstyle almost as women too so um a lot of them had like sort of like the center parted long hair um but with that they might have like a full beard they might have like crazy thick sideburns um so it's starting to be sort of like a fun time i feel like in um uh, men's hairstyles and facial hair because a lot of the rules that i feel like um have been placed on them are really starting to get broken and it's a little bit more like culturally accepted um, that men are going to start looking this way, not all the way yet, um, but we're certainly getting a little bit closer for it to be more of like a um, mainstream sort of a look. Um, and then African American men uh, were also wearing afros, they were also starting to embrace um, more of their natural texture, so really you can just see um, throughout the 60s and as the 60s progressed that um, people were really starting to just embrace themselves and embrace um, just kind of like being natural um, and it was really great to kind of start seeing this like become a more mainstream thing because for so long people were forced into looking um, a specific way and now it's really starting to like like I said like in the 50s you know we kind of start seeing people being like okay like it's okay if we rebel um, but in the 60s people were kind of not giving anyone an option whether or not it was okay they just kind of decided like you know this is how we're going to do things and um, 
you're going to accept it because this is who we are, you know? So I think it's it's cool to kind of um, really study this decade because you see such a sharp contrast from the beginning of it um, to the end, right? So if we start out in like 1960s, like looking at like Jackie Kennedy and her family, and then you look at all the photos from Woodstock, um, it is like two completely different worlds. Um, so it's really cool to just kind of see um, that in such a short period of time, things can say, like change so much, um, both like culturally and within style. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about the 1960s, um, and I hope you enjoyed it.